Hi, I'm Carcino. Oh, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. No one knows Carcino and none of these. There's so much going on in the world. And I'm just giving my two cents on it. What's good? What's good? What's good? It's your boy Carcino here. And let's get to it. What's up? To everybody in the chat, hit the like button coming through the door. It's Carcino. You already know it. And let's just get to it, man. It's It's time to go. Now, when you see stuff like this, y'all got to know what time it is, man. Because the chickens are coming home to roost. Absolutely. They're coming home to roost. Stephen A. Smith is learning a valuable lesson. What you do for theatric performance and try to denigrate and disrespect someone who works very hard at their craft, who spend hours and hours to make themselves something and somebody when you go ahead and do something like that, you're putting yourself at risk. And you're leaving yourself open. Your credibility, everything about you is compromised. Now, we have came here and spoke about Stephen A. Smith plenty of times. We talked about his fake journalistic history we talk about how he really got where he got. And everything seems to be falsified. His basketball career, everything falsified. He lied about his past to try to create this, this history. He's even wrote books to document his lies. And a person that would do that oh, sorry about that. It's the same person that we look up here today being called out for his behavior. And every time Kyrie Irving wins a game, it makes Stephen A. look bad. When you tell that this man should just retire because of his stance, of what he believed in, as the man didn't say anything that was wrong. Y'all tried to kick him out of the league. And you were leading the charge. A black man. Leading the charge. To remove a black man. From his position. It was disgraceful. Jalen Brown was the only player that I know of any stature who stood up for Kyrie Irving. Everybody else did not. And now both of these men are in the NBA Finals. 
And here you are, got to find a way to villainize the vice president of basketball operations. Well, no, nah, sorry. Vice president of the players union. A man who had an internship to NASA. A highly intelligent person who did not have to play basketball. He chose to. And now, because he did that, he was supposed to become dumb? No. He's very smart. He negotiated his own contract, something that everybody seems to frown at in the NBA because they want agents to represent black folks. You don't know nothing. And he was mentored by Isaiah Lord Thomas III. You know him? The first NBA player ever to give you an interview when no one knew who you was, Stephen A? How do we forget? Now, his controversial takes is nothing new to the public. The veterans at ESPN don't like him. People at the place talking behind his back, telling the bosses about him, trying to get him up out of there. And why do they want him out? Because he's let his arrogance and his ego go front and center. Now, Stephen A goes on his show, first take, and out of the blue just decides to say what his sources had told him about Jalen Brown. During the show, his analyst conveyed a message on Boston Celtics superstar. He said, an anonymous source. Alfred. He clarified he only did his job. I'm just sharing a message. I wanted to read to y'all what an NBA source sent me, just sent me. He said Jalen Brown is not so much that he's underrated. It's that he's just not liked because of his I am better than you attitude. He knows it. It's the same reason. He is not as markable as he should be. That's what an NBA source just sent me. Now, an NBA source just out of the blue decided to send that to you while you were on the air, and you decided to share that to the rest of the world. Now, it's just so convenient that you have to be in the middle of a Jalen Brown take Somebody from your NBA source is going to do this. Maybe he had an axe to grind with Jalen Brown. But they use you to be the microphone. And without asking any questions or even talking to someone, you chose to go out and basically disrespect and humiliate a black player who you said you liked and respected just because someone sent you a text message. You decided to go on air in front of millions of people and try to ruin this guy's markability with one take. Unbelievable. So Isaiah Thomas had to take up well, he didn't have to. He decided to confront Stephen A. Smith over that take. He was not happy when you were speaking on behalf of this anonymous source. He said, taking a stand for my good friend Brown. The NBA champion said that he has known Brown for many years. He is certain that the player is marketable and his name 
shouldn't be slandered. Furthermore, he asked Stephen A. Smith, go ahead, bring the name out. He said, I've been friends, mentor, and advisor to Jalen Brown since he was a student at UC Berkeley. He is 100% marketable. And before you slander his name, Stephen A. Smith, tell your source to put their name on it or don't speak on it. Let it be known. And Zeke, and this is why I've always respected Isaiah Thomas, because Isaiah Lord Thomas III does not have to say anything. He don't. He don't have to get involved with people. He don't have to do anything. He chose to do something. Then, of course, Stephen A. got all chest out. I have no idea what you're talking about, Isaiah Thomas. First off, that first sentence is a lie. I don't know what you, you have no idea what he's talking about. You know exactly what he's talking about. That was the dumbest thing you could ever put in your first opening line is, I have no idea what you're talking about, Isaiah Thomas. You know exactly what he's talking about. You want to pretend. You want to pretend. And now, because you want to pretend, like you're just being attacked out of the blue and everything's just taken out of context, he comes in and says, I've been a fan of Jalen Brown for years, still am. What's unfortunate is that you, who known me for decades, would choose to go on X, Twitter, to express whatever dissent you feel instead of calling me direct. But I get it. <laughs> uh, it's a pattern several folks have used against me. Recently, suddenly forgetting communication we've always had. So be it. I root for JB always. A great dude, a great player. But the Celtics have to close the deal. This ain't had nothing to do with the Boston Celtics winning a game. This has nothing to do with any of that, Stephen A. And you know it. Soon after that, right, rant that he did, Isaiah made another message and said, all love between you and I, Stephen A. Let's talk when time permits. Tell your source to stand on their words and not use you to throw their stones. Jalen Brown said, reveal your source. Or state your source. That's the only thing he said. Put three words up. State your source. First of all, not happening. It's journalism. Not revealing sources. Secondly, if you continue to watch the segment, I completely disagree with them, as did Kendrick Perkins. The point we were actually discussing is how underappreciated you are and why that may be. Which is why I read the quote. I even brought up how socially conscious you are and how that may not be liked because you're socially conscious, knowing you're a good brother. Also, that you're a $300 million man and you deserve it. But that doesn't mean naysayers don't get, don't get hurt. That comes with the territory. So, because he decided to state that, know that what he was saying was ridiculous. He decided to try to clean it up for himself by saying, hey, I said these nice things about you after I was saying what I was paid to say. The boss is here at ESPN, and whoever here told me to go ahead and say that and get that out into the public. So I did.
<laughs> I went and said my part. Now, my take is this. Stephen A. Smith does like Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown exhibits everything that he likes. Jalen Brown exhibits every single thing that he likes. And now that Jalen Brown exhibits everything that he likes in a person, the way he stands up as a man and he's smart and articulate, he likes Jalen Brown. But he's always going to do what Massa say do. If Massa say jump, you better believe you better jump. And that's it. So that's the narrative. That's the change. That's the, oh, wow, what is this? That's what that represents. Everything you see coming forward now is what everybody else has told you. People's fears have become realities. And they're stuck. Stephen A. Smith knows what he is. He's become a megaphone for those most powerful. So when the naysayers had a voice, right? He every day on his show talking about how everybody else really don't matter. But because you put the words NBA source in the fray, that's supposed to carry weight around here. That's supposed to mean something to all of us. Just because you say it. What you was doing was playing both sides of the fence. You wanted to say something real nice about the guy to show that you don't agree with what you had to actually say on the air. But this really got under the skin of black folks because we couldn't believe that you would actually say that about Jalen Brown over the air. He just recently apologized to Kyrie Irving without really apologizing to Kyrie Irving. Only because Kenny Smith told the story of how he had to call you and get in the middle of this because it was getting ridiculous with your stand against Kyrie Irving. And it was really with his father, who should never have to be irate at Stephen A. Smith about his son and then your actions and the way you chose to denigrate that man in front of millions. Y'all recklessly lied on this man. And it's funny to me how it's all of a sudden journalism when it's covering your ass, but then saying that you're not journalists, you guys are in the entertainment field, and that you don't have to basically research, be correct, and do things on the fly. So it's, it's very understanding to me how you guys blur the line, claim to be journalists one minute, and then entertainers the next. As if it's a switch you could turn on and off. Maybe you were neither. Oh, and your first take numbers, they're not as strong. See, the networks see that they really don't need you.
for the price you're asking. A lot of people really don't want to work with you. They find your ego too much. Too much ego stroking is leading them to say, why are we even entertaining this guy? Which I get. I get it more than most. Stephen A. has not presented himself to be a likable human being or a person someone could even respect. He's put himself in a position to where he's looked at as a court jester or a yes man for Whitey. Jason Whitlock, who I despise, um, has taken a position against him, as he has with all kind of people in journalism, black people in journalism. And that's his thing. He's aware I don't like him. Because to me, I know exactly what he is. So he's saying, if it's about something positive, we could talk. But anything else, I don't want to talk, man, if it ain't going to be positive. There's nothing we have to say to each other. You see, the problem is people like you want to befriend people like me to see your side and saying, hey, I'm, I'm just, no, you just decided to take the dark path. You're a hell of a writer, but you're a piece of it. And when you're a piece of it, it overshadows everything that you do. If you think dumping on your people for a bunch of people who don't care about those people, let alone yourself, is going to carry you to great high places, then so be it. You'll be out there, but don't come back here on this side of the fence because we don't want you. Now, here's the narrative. Here is the narrative. What is it that you created that you could pass on to anybody else, Stephen A? What, what you created that you could pass on to your children? Hmm? Nothing. You have created no platform for them. Your children is going to have to go out in the world and get a job for somebody else just like you. Now, we need to ask ourselves, what is really happening here? Why are people being prohibited? Why other people are being promoted? The world has often been a very fickle place. The world has been put in a diagram where they have to make decisions on how they're going to proceed moving forward. They're going to have to make decisions based on everything that's relative to us on how we see things. And a lot of people are not comfortable in those, in those zones. And because of that, everybody narrative is jaded. And now that Stephen A. Smith knows what time it is, He's going to be running for the hills. He came out and apologized to Kyrie Irving because he's been getting roasted on social media. And it makes him look foolish. 
but he keeps playing that. They keep playing the tape all through Twitter how you told Kyrie Irving to retire. And now you look like a fool trying to villainize Jalen Brown, who the NBA kept off of all NBA teams. When he played just as well, if not better, than Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum has been their guy, the face of the team. Because they don't want it to be Jalen Brown. Someone has to be the superstar. So they try to make Jason Tatum a superstar. And it just isn't. They don't have a superstar. So now, the Boston Celtics, who's won all these games, dominated the NBA this season by shooting a bunch of threes. A team with no superstar. Is going to waltz in and whoop on Dallas in the NBA Finals. They're back for the second time. So let's see how this plays out. Now, since their rookie year, they made it to the Eastern Conference Finals against LeBron, a game seven in Cleveland, in which they should have won, and they lost it down the stretch. These rookies made it this far and put the world on notice. As Kyrie Irving was gone the previous year, this turned into something else. And I've seen Stephen A. Smith blame Kawhi Leonard for being injured. Saying he's the worst superstar in the NBA. And just take shots at people he think he can. Kyrie, I mean, Kawhi Leonard can take it because he's not on social media. He lives his life completely off of social media. Which everybody thinks this is bad for business. You have a player who won't come out and advertise and promote anything. You still got people like, I talked to Kawhi Leonard yesterday on Twitter. I mean, no, you didn't. <laughs> he does not like media. He does. He hates that he has to do these speaking engagements. When he was in San Antonio, they absolved him of this. And now they're like, hey, wait a minute. This guy's been skipping all the time. He didn't talk. So now they got it to where he talks. And a guy who meticulously works on his game as much as he does. You, for whatever the reason, just for a hot take. Decides to humiliate yourself and say he's the worst superstar in basketball history. There's a lot of people that don't like Stephen A. Smith. So this is, I'm not saying anything that the rest of the world doesn't already know. We came in this thing with respect for you. That's how it always happens. I used to see you at the boxing fights. I'm going, whoa, what's up, Stephen A? We used to think you were somebody real. And you turned out to be a slimy, conniving, arrogant punk. That's what you turned yourself into. A slimy, conniving, arrogant punk. That people got to sit around and wonder now. Why are we supporting him? Why are we giving him our energy? We have that power. If we tune him out and put the focus on anything other than, he will fade away. He gonna try to come back to, hey, come on now, don't forget about your brother. I'm not that bad. Think about all the good I did. 
He going to try to come to the light. Because what good is it to them, the people he's trying to appease, when he can't control the masses that they want to have brainwashed? What good is he to them then? They'll let him go. Because they have no further need for him. And then they'll try to find another one. And rope that one in. So we need to be careful. Very careful. When this situation implodes. So with that being said, shouts out to y'all in the chat. Kwame Brown Bus Life. Welcome to HDII TV. Armando Black TV. Jag Sports with Jose Rodriguez. Ticket TV, Dreamers Pro. And that's it right now. All right, y'all, I'm out.